Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Will Smith and I'm the coding engineer here at LaCroix Precision Optics. I've been in the coding department here at LaCroix for over 20 years and have seen a progression of complexity in the requirements that continue to challenge us. Coming up from the production floor, I tend to look at things in a practical sense. So today I will present specifying optical coatings for manufacturing, a manufacturer's perspective. Our goal today will be to highlight some of our capabilities and some of the challenges presented concerning coding specs so that buyers and designers might gain a better understanding. As we all know, optics are applied in many diverse fields of use every day all over the planet and even in space. The fundamental purpose of optics is to control light in a manner to make it useful and optical coatings do a great deal to enhance that optical control by modifying the reflectance, transmittance, and absorptive properties of the optic substrates to make them much more efficient and functional. LaCroix Precision Optics manufactures custom glass precision optics, and so everything in this presentation will be related to optical glass. Here at LaCroix, we currently have eight coating chambers, and we have the capability to coat very high volumes of optics. We utilize e-beam and thermal evaporation with ion and plasma assist. We focus on coatings from 250 to 2500 nanometers. We use Perkin Elmer spectrophotometers for our spectral measurements. And we also have in-house environmental durability tape testing capabilities, which include adhesion, abrasion, humidity, temperature, salt spray fog, cleanability, and solubility. From a manufacturer's standpoint, there are several pertinent pieces of information that need to be relayed in the specification of optical coatings. This information should be clearly conveyed from the very beginning when requesting an optics quote. Missing information leads to more time invested in gathering that information or assumptions can be made that can lead to error. Our goal is to provide you with an accurate quote as quickly as possible and optics that fully meet your expectations. Let us look at the things that we need to know. The essential information would be the glass type, the wavelength or range of wavelengths of interest, transmission or reflection requirements, angle of incidence or the angle of incidence range, and with that also comes polarization requirements, clear apertures, supplemental requirements such as environmental durability requirements, laser damage requirements, witness sample requirements, special documentation, special marking requirements, or special packaging requirements. Now let's focus a little more in depth on each of these. The glass type. This is absolutely necessary because coatings are designed specific to the index of refraction. This means that a set of multiple optics with a wide range of glass types may require multiple individual coatings, even though the specifications may be the same. Substrates with close index can usually be coated together with a common design. The thermal expansion coefficients are important for processing considerations. A lot of our coating processes are high temperature processes and therefore great care must be taken during heating and cooling of these glasses to prevent thermal shock that can result in fracturing. The chemical properties are important. A lot of optical glasses have poor chemical properties relating to humidity, water, acid, or alkali resistance. These glasses have a high potential for staining. These demand great care and special considerations in processing, achieving clean surfaces for coating being the primary example. These poor chemical properties will limit the use of ultrasonic cleaning prior to coating, which puts a larger demand for manual cleaning. Also, the internal transmittance values can become a consideration. Coatings cannot make transmittance better than the internal transmittance will allow. The wavelength or wavelength range or bandwidth 
Pertaining to this, I would just point out that coding requirements for single wavelengths or small wavelength ranges are easier than broad ranges. As the range increases, the achievable performance diminishes and coding designs and processes become longer. The small graph there shows as you move from a V-coat to a visible broadband AR to a visible to a near-infrared AR, you can see the reflectance creeping up. Also, not all available coding materials transmit the same for all wavelengths. So to an extent, the wavelength of use can dictate the materials used in the coatings. Reflection or transmission requirements. Now this seems obvious, but it's very important. There's a lot of difference between 99% reflection and 99% transmission. I have seen information so vague that we had to ask. Consider the measurements when specifying. An example would be a typical broadband AR spec with an average of less than 1, 400 to 700 nanometers with a 0 to 10 degree angle of incidence. Reflection measurements cannot be made at 0 degrees due to the physical constraints of the spectrophotometers. 6 degrees is the lowest angle of incidence that we can measure. Generally speaking, differences in performance from 0 to 15 degrees is negligible anyways. For optics coded on one side only, such as acromat elements, high transmission values cannot be measured due to uncoated surface reflection losses. These should be specified in reflection to allow for straightforward measurements. Very high or very low reflection values can be challenging to obtain accurately and specialized measurements such as laser ring down may be required for demanding applications. Angle of incidence or range of angle of incidence. The optical coating performance shifts toward shorter wavelengths as the angle of incidence is increased. Specifications requiring a large range for this can be challenging. Broader bandwidth designs must be used to aid in covering the larger range for angle of incidence. As the angle of incidence increases, the achievable performance diminishes and coding designs and processes become longer. As you can see in the graph depicted there, you can see how the reflection is climbing as you go from zero to 30 to 45 degree angle of incidence. Polarization is especially important as angle of incidence increases. The reflection of S&P polarization separates as it is increased, and S-pole will generally always have a higher reflectance than P-pole. Special design and coating material considerations can be used that combat these challenges, but there are limitations. I might just make mention of clear apertures. Um, clear apertures that are full or near full do not allow for fixturing of optics for coating. Generally speaking, one millimeter per side is easily accommodated. Tighter apertures and optic configurations may need special considerations. Next would be laser damage requirements. This is critical to know in the beginning because design, material, and processing considerations are important for laser damage. It should be made clear if laser damage testing is a requirement. This is an outside operation with additional cost associated. There are two common tests that we offer. One, laser damage certification. This is a qualification test and the optic is laser damage tested to a specified power level. Number two would be laser damage threshold. This is a quantification test. The power levels are increased incrementally until damage is observed to find the threshold level. Environmental durability requirements. These are usually specified per standard mil specs or ISO standards. 
most common being mil PRF 13830B for single layer mag fluoride films, mil C48497 or ISO 9211-3 for multi-layer coatings, mil M13508C for metalized mirrors. Special or unusual environmental use, such as space or underwater use, should be made known at the time of a request for quote because design, material, and process considerations can all influence the environmental durability requirements. Also, it should be made clear if actual testing is required for each batch. LaCroix has developed an internal testing procedure that covers all of our coatings. Testing is performed on a regular basis to ensure our coating systems and processes are robust. Every batch is subjected to abrasion and adhesion testing as a normal procedure. Witness sample requirements. Witness samples from coating lots can be provided. LaCroix maintains an extensive stock of witness samples to cover an entire range of index. And witness sample glass types are always matched as closely as possible to the actual substrate. Actual glass samples can also be provided upon request. Just keep in mind that this is essentially purchasing an additional optic due to the fact that we have to purchase the raw material and process those witness samples. In my opinion, it's rarely valuable to have the actual glass samples. The next items I'd like to mention do not necessarily pertain to the coating itself, but they do tend to become the responsibilities of the coating department, with coating being at the end of the manufacturing process. These things can tend to be very labor intensive, so to be fair to the customer and ourselves, we really need to know these requirements on the front end so that we can cost and plan accordingly. These things would be special documentation, such as electronic, tabulated, or PDF documents, special marking requirements, like identifying dots, arrows, laser engraving, special packaging requirements, like PETG, membrane packaging, or anti-static vacuum sealing. These are all things we can do, but are not standard additional time and cost associated and should be reflected in the quoting.